Hey, this is Corey with Sure. In this video on RF zones, we'll look at a few examples to put in practice the things we've learned about zones so far. We'll demonstrate coordinating for a small festival with multiple stages, a building with multiple floors and rooms, a single frequency that roams through multiple zones, and for a show with multiple time slots. An important point to remember when using RF zones are the three considerations for distance, antenna orientation, and obstructions that may impact zone relationships. In this example, there is a music festival with four stages, each that have their own equipment. When we coordinate for all frequencies in the same default zone, we don't get enough compatible frequencies. Remembering to take distance into account, we can probably assume that these stages are in different zones, and when we run a scan at each stage, we find that there isn't enough energy traded between these two stages to consider them the same RF zone. So, the zone relationships could look a bit more like this. When we calculate again, we find plenty of frequencies. Corporate or education scenarios are similar in that there are multiple wireless systems near each other. Here, there are slightly different concerns due to the layout of the space. There's more emphasis on obstructions, building materials of walls and floors. If the entire building were one RF zone, it'd be really difficult to coordinate enough frequencies. But when we separate zones by floors, for example, we can easily find enough. We can do this because we know that floor one and floor three are far enough apart and separated by concrete and steel so they don't interact much with one another. The same is true of floors 2 and 4 and 1 and 4. Depending on your testing, you might find that floors 1 and 4 have no interaction at all. A roaming frequency is a slightly different use case where one or more devices will be used in any RF zone at any given time, so it needs to be considered in each zone as a potential interferer. Reusing the building example, you might have one or more transmitters that will be used on any floor. Reusing the festival example, you might have one or more transmitters that will be used at any stage. To create this configuration in Wireless Workbench, add the frequencies for these roaming devices to their own zone, and respect channel-to-channel -channel and channel-to-intermod spacing with every other zone. This way, it is expected that these frequencies will work while all other frequencies are in use, regardless of where the roaming devices are located. If you have four bands playing on the same stage back to back, and each band will be tuning up and getting their wireless ready while the previous band is on stage, make each band its own RF zone that respects the channel to channel and channel to intermod spacing of the band before and after it only. Band one and band two will have their frequencies in use at the same time, but Band 1 and Band 3, or Band 4, will not. Band 2 needs to account for Band 1 and Band 3 in the coordination, but not Band 4. And Band 4 needs to account for frequencies used by Band 3 only. These are the most common scenarios that we've seen for using RF zones. Zones can be really helpful for finding enough frequencies when your production has more than one performance area or performance time slot. For more tutorial videos, check out Sure.com.